All right, well, I have been slaving away painting this steering column, uh, and I was able to salvage the bearings off of that eBay steering column and take them apart, clean them, regrease them, oil the felt pad, and stick them back in here. So I got two basically brand new bearings on the upper and lower portions of the steering column. The fuel pump currently I had it running and it didn't flood and it was idling so I'm thinking part of my problem might be the fuel tank location with gravity feeding too much into the pump but I mean that doesn't really make too much sense so maybe the chunk of dirt or whatever whatever was causing me issues went away although I doubt it so we're gonna find out when it starts running again I'm probably gonna dive into that water pump here I don't think I'll have to take the radiator off I think I could get to it just by removing the fan and popping the bolts off uh, but I'm gonna paint the uh, new one before I install it so there's that um, I re I redid Ooh. I redid both uh, wiper motors uh, they're stupid easy uh, they were in desperate need of cleaning the driver and passenger so uh, now when it's running and you pull that out she goes back and forth with no issues uh, it's a very simple mechanism uh, Trico is still in business however I don't think they make replacements you can get aftermarket uh, innards and things but all these needed was a deep cleaning and a regreasing and uh, they're good as new so I am happy about that oh what else here the um oh and if you need if you need any uh, wiper motor parts and things I uh, <laughs> I broke this little knurled I don't know retainer on one of mine because it would not come off so it it sits there on that shaft and then the actual uh, the actual wiper arm here kind of just sits in there but anyway, uh, these are the original, well, not original, but these are the original style of wiper for this. And I bought a electric conversion kit, and it came with this wimpy little blade. I mean, what am I going to do with that? So I ordered, that was, that was the main reason I rebuilt the vacuum wipers in trying to keep it as original as I can. Uh, I ordered uh, a new one of these from Amazon so we're gonna see how this works and if it fits my arm then I'll order another one for the passenger side. So there's that. Oh that steering column I got off of eBay had the original boot on the lower end oops <laughs> well parts of it anyway uh, but it had a spring around this smaller diameter that retained it and I mean that was it a very very short in height boot so I think my main issue is that if you buy a rebuild uh, for one of these through scouter one you get you get this giant boot and looking online this is for like a Willie's Jeep and I just I don't have a Willie's Jeep I got a scout 
So I can't really cut this down because it's it's uh, stepped down to the smaller diameter. This is the first boot I had on there, and I had to wallow it out in order for it to fit on the three in or three quarter inch shaft. So I was fighting this, which is the whole reason why I pulled the, st <laughs> the steering column and the gearbox and all that is because this boot was like three times the size it was supposed to be. So here is another boot I purchased thinking it was the a, the proper boot. So when you go to try to shove this thing on there, this is how far, I mean it's got to go on there like this much. So there's no way that boot is correct for this Scout. And this is exactly how I took it apart. It's got a washer butt up against the shaft there. And I thought I had it made with this one, but after I assembled it, I was like, how in the hell is this supposed to sit down on there and, you know, be correct? So I, I don't know. But I guess I'll find out. I haven't tried assembling it, but I just don't see how that's really going to work. I guess it could kind of float. But, I don't know. Based upon the original hardware that was on it, uh, I found a 64 Chevy Impala boot that matches darn near close to what that original boot was. So I'm going to try that and see what I get with this. Not sure if I'm going to have success or not. Uh... I believe this is made to kind of travel in and out, um, but this is the one that came with uh, the shaft and the current one I'm going to use. I'm painting it right now, uh, but this is all cleaned and ready to get reassembled. And I was going to wait for that Chevy Impala boot because this one just seems uh, kind of outrageous for how squished it is. Uh, anyway, but if it, it would just barely go into that housing when it should be like down in here. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Moving on, this, uh, was it steering column collar, I guess, sits behind, sits on the uh, steering column behind the steering wheel. I, uh, it had a little tumble off the cliff and it chipped a part of it out there. You can see I super glued it back together again there. And then I had to I kind of ripped it to get it off of the column because I didn't want to take out any of the wiring in the column in order to slide this over anything. So uh, what I might have to do to put it back on is take a box knife and slit where I glued, stretch it onto the steering column, and then re-glue it and then paint it in place. And that way it can uh, still have its boot here. Uh, surprisingly, they don't remake these. Um, I think Scout Parts or International Scout Parts, whatever it is, they want like 25 bucks for one of these things. So I ain't paying that. I'm going to super glue this thing back together again and we're going to just use it for what we got. Uh, okay, I think... That is all my current issues. Uh, the steering wheel itself is going to be a long project. And we'll dive into that later here. But uh, let me get started on that uh, water pump here. Alright, well we're not doing the water pump. But that Chevy Impala boot came in. 
and it fits amazing like it was made to fit so it sits right here there's the spring keeping its tension and then I got it to clip in the only thing I had to do was to take a box knife and just very tinily, tiny, tinily, very small amount. I had to trim each side, 180 from each side, so this clip can lock it all into place. But everything looks perfect. Everything's sealed. Uh, Regreased this uh, how it should be because this washer and that are supposed to butt up against that lip and then this is your whole steering column here so before with that bigger boot there's the size difference with that boot so before I was trying to squish this boot down and nothing it wouldn't allow the shaft to come up far enough for me to get the nut onto the steering wheel so I finally forced it but in doing that I really pinched down on that steering wheel so it was a complete bear to get off of there and uh, in that process I kind of damaged it undoing all my hard work on it so uh, hopefully when we get this uh, steering column in and we get the shaft in everything plays nice and then I will dive into uh, refixing this original steering wheel for this thing but uh, I will put a link in the description for those interested 1964 Chevy Impala steering boot uh, fits like a glove and I would think it was like 20 bucks so you can do with that information as you wish uh, anyway re-greased everything's happy I am happy. Um, all right, let's see what other trouble we can get into. All right, here is the steering column. Here is that flange. I uh, re-slid it, put it back on the steering column, re-glued it, sanded it, and I gave her one coat of paint here. So everything is seems to be okay still still a little sticky there so um, I'm oops I'm also prepping uh, where the steering column will go into I bought a new uh, seal for it scatter one sells one and it's a it's a 3d printed uh, two-piece assembly it's it's nice it's only like 25 bucks uh, so that's what I'm gonna go with there and then the fun part was figuring out oh, I left my light on in there uh, the fun part was figuring out what bolts go where but luckily I was smart and I put these two bolts right up above where that pick is so that was easy and then uh, the rest of the bolts I found in the ashtray. So I was thinking, you know, back in the day, I guess. And uh, hopefully everything will play nice here. Now I did take the steering wheel, I don't know, not the steering wheel, but the steering column seals. And I uh, cleaned those. Uh, let me show you guys those here get my cold beverage all right uh oh too many things ah it's good that's motivation to keep working you know okay so there's a rubber boot there and then there's this other rubber boot and they kind of sandwiched the steering column together. So we took these out and cleaned them. And then I took uh, some tire shine, because it's rubber, and kind of gave them a bath in that. So there's my hardware. 
oops, so that steering column ought to just slide right through and then uh, clamp down on the two innards there. And then we can put the uh, parking brake back up and then hopefully we can run the uh, air system and get that buttoned up, which is the whole reason for starting this whole project. And then it kind of snowballed into what you see now. So um, we are going to hopefully attempt to install the steering column without screwing up the paint too much. And then once that's in, we can uh, clamp it down, get it bolted in, uh, put that boot on Ooh, up under here put that boot on there there's the remains of the original there so this will be the second one I've purchased and uh, what I did the first time is I took like gasket sealer and I kind of just globbed it around it and then shoved it on there and it worked great until you had to you know take it off and then it was a complete pain in the butt so uh, I might just do some like bathtub tile clear silicone and just kind of seal that up a little bit in case any wind comes through so we're just gonna do that here and then uh, cleaned up the dash right where the steering wheel or the column is gonna go so I just took some WD-40 and a red scotch Bright pad and just scrubbed her down. And it actually looks pretty good here compared to kind of the rusty, rusty portions of the dash. So we're probably going to do that to the whole thing. All right. Let's uh, try to get this steering column in, shall we? All right, we got it in. And uh, it was a pain, however, we got it in. So, there's the... There's the 3D printed uh, gasket from Scouter 1. So, I mean, it fits nice, it looks nice, and you don't have to... Uh, since it's designed that it's split, you don't have to uh, remove the steering column or do any of that jazz. But anyway, uh, we got her hooked up. I proceeded to get my fingerprints all over that stupid gasket thing, so I might have to. Uh, I might actually have to take a heat gun to it and kind of warm it up to melt it back into its form because right now. It, won't fit flush with the dash uh, so we'll figure that out I guess but uh, blinkers still work uh, the bearings are still looking fine um, I am happy it is in I hate dash work because you have to be on your back and it's awful but uh, you guys don't have to all right Pardon me. Alright, so there is our steering column in all its glory. And of course, the nice paint job got scuffed, but that's what you get. Uh, but, oh. That is like in there. Huh. Well, I'm going to have to push that up. Hmm. I might have to loosen that 3D printed thing because if I pull up on it, I might, <laughs> I might break it because it's going to have to come up like two or three inches for it to line up with the gearbox there. Although I got to pop that off, slide the shaft all the way up it. Uh, dirty jokes all around here. Uh, let me pull that off and see if I can sneak the 
the steering shaft up up into the cab there gently all right well I got the steering shaft in and it fits nice it's flush all the way up against the gearbox this is correct gasket works great everything lines up there uh, however uh, the 3d printed gasket does not line up at all and I know for a fact I had one on here before and it fit just fine so I'm thinking something's goofy with where the steering column mounts to the dash with that bracket but the bracket has a notch in it and that notch is inside the steering column so that all lines up maybe the bottom gasket is twisted or something anyway it's too high up it needs to come down like a significant amount which I don't know if I can do that so if not we're gonna do something else with that gasket because right now the steering shaft is like perfect everything lines up uh, if anything I'll pop those two bolts on the underside holding that bracket on and try to re it uh, it'll be easier since it's hooked up to the steering box here and it won't slide everywhere uh, it's just weird that it's like too high even though it's the exact same steering column I pulled out of it so I'm not sure and I measured the steering shaft with the old steering shaft and they were exactly the same so everything is the same uh, it's just being weird I guess scout problems uh, but overall I'm very happy with how that lined up uh, everything on the inside lines up nice it's just it's just weird yeah so I mean that looks nice the shaft has plenty of distance before I could like barely even get this shaft to suck up into the steering column so here it's actually like sitting here waiting to accept the steering wheel but the gasket and you can see the hole there and that's for this bolt here and it's just grossly uh, high so I might undo I'm using you guys to cheat I might undo these two bolts here I was thinking something's something's wrong with this lower gasket here and maybe the upper Ugh. but if you look up above I'm not, uh, I can't see you guys are seeing more than me if you look up above that oops <laughs> That lines up in there, if you guys can see. Anyway, there's a notch on the top of the steering wheel, or on the collar, and it is sitting on the steering column. And, like, I'm not sure what else I can really do here to make it go down more. And, like, I can, like, push on it, but it doesn't do anything. And now the, the silly gasket fits nice. Although now it just looks like crap because I got dirt all over it. But that is my problem. Uh, looking online, I don't think there's anything wrong with the print because I compared it to the old broken one I had and everything looked fine. Why is there a screw? stuck you guys see that <laughs> what is that oh look at that okay anyway uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the print 
I tried doing it a different way and it didn't line up and I remember it fitting just fine the first time uh, previously to me pulling out the steering column so um, if I screw around in here hopefully it'll work um, if not I was looking online at like a early Mustang uh, firewall steering column gasket. Maybe look into that a bit later, but for now I will uh, mess around with here next weekend and deal with that. And with that... Uh, get to the steering wheel here and uh, she went through some abuse with me trying to get it off uh, the previous time so I had to super glue some chunks back together here and then sand them out so this portion filled in okay I got a little bit of buttering up here I gotta do and then it cracked in a few places so I took a Dremel, that's why it looks so bad I took a Dremel and opened up the cracks and then I am, uh, I could have swore I had more but I've ordered POR15 which is a two-stage uh, epoxy but it's kinda like a rubbery epoxy and so uh, when I fill in the cracks with it, sand it and paint it, it'll kind of stretch and contract with the heat as well. Because this is like a weird, uh, not Bakelite, but more rubbery kind of material that's on the steering wheel. And uh, if you use any hardened stuff, it won't expand and contract like it should, and it'll probably crack on you. So... Um, Overall, the damage isn't too bad compared to what I had to do to get it to be in this state in the first place. Many a dremeling and uh, mixing up batches of POR-15. But of course, when you go to try to look for it, you can't find it anywhere. So there's 50 bucks down the drain, and I'm sure I'll find it later when I don't need it. Um, I'll probably throw a screw into that because this is your horn button contact so it's got two but I might need a third uh, getting close to actually like putting around in the darn thing and uh, once I pull it out um, once we pull it out we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna do a deep clean because it's kind of you know, piled up with a bunch of crap as cars do in garages. And then uh, we can finally work on the darn uh, fuel system to be a bit more permanent than a riding lawnmower tank. And here is that. Here's that like 90s Chevy filler neck. I'm not sure if it's going to have the right uh, angle to it, but I mean for 20 bucks I figured why not try anyway. Uh, worst case scenario I guess I could attempt to cut it and weld it. Um, I'm really hoping it just kind of fits in with no problems, but uh, knowing this thing everything is kind of custom even the stuff you buy that's supposed to be for it so uh, with that that is the next uh, endeavor with the old scout here thank you guys for uh, watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video